to the table here in this upcoming series. We really get to see the best of both worlds when it comes to esports in the military. I mean, you get to see the real time strategy coming from these players, you know, what they learn in their day to day jobs, you know, the, the kind of skills that are born inside the military shown inside of esports as well inside the games we get it all across the board no matter what game you and i are watching hello Lauren. but it's time to talk about our next player as well king jace on the opposite side representing pokemon trainer let's check him out my name is jason king i'm an e2 airman and i'm from mount air force base for the most part I spend most of my days at the gym either playing volleyball or working out I come from a family of five brothers and the two sisters. The benefit of having so many brothers is we're all competitive and we all love Smash Bros. We would just play all night, every night, playing each other. It was a lot of fun. It's kind of how much you put into it. Very intense, very competitive. It's really interesting to hear the, the two different advantages both of these players uh, have coming into this tournament. For, for King Jace, I, I think there's a ton of value in having that many brothers that all play and love Smash Brothers because that is just naturally going to breed the competitor in anyone to be able to so consistently go up against someone and, and, and try to, you know, be the best of, of competing brothers. I think that sets up uh, King Jace very well here on the other side I, I i did want to point out that excalibur saying that you know he started playing smash brothers back during the brawl days and has always pretty much made game and watch when you have a, a player that you know is so attached to one character and can really understand the ins and outs you start to see that character become an expression of them wanting to play the game it's not so much that he plays game and watch well it's just like game and watch becomes that extension so I, I think both of these players have really unique advantages to bring to this upcoming matchup. Now, as a younger brother of two older brothers who both played video games as well, I, I know what that competition is like and things will get heated when you're playing against each other. So we're gonna see if King Jays can get it done against Excalibur here in this matchup. As early on, I'm gonna be looking at what he can get done with this Squirtle because I think this Squirtle matchup versus Mr. Game Watch is gonna be something that we're gonna be watching very closely in the next couple games. You, you know, Seymour, I didn't know you were the the the, the youngest of three brothers. It, it makes a lot of sense. You you, you got big little brother energy. Wait. I like that. Never, never change, Seymour. Never change. <laughs> Well, we're gonna see if King Jace or King Jace can take that, you know, brother energy and, and that competition into this game matchup as well. As early on, I'm looking at some very good executions from Squirtle, but a very good execution from Mr. Game and Watch. Hooked on, buried, and cooked. As you see, stock number one go out of there for King Jace, netting the lead here for Excalibur. Pointed out some of the ad the advantages of this matchup. Starting to make it come to pass here. 36% already on stock number two. King Jace opting for the Squirtle. Getting the combos going. Forward throw. And swap to get Ivysaur in time as you do see. Caliber get back to the stage, looking at edge guard a little bit, almost finds the spike as well, but Charizard will be able to recover him. And look at this, Excalibur's already evened up the percentages. Excalibur's positioning on the ledge is so good. Being able to, to get the sausages and everything right over the ledge to, to make that recovery that much more of a liability is netting huge dividends here in game number one. King Jace switching over to the Ivy Sword. Not going to go for the two frame on the down air, but will find the hit to pick up stock number one. Their work is actively cut out for them right now. Going to be an uphill battle right now for the Pokemon trainer. King Jace looking to get it done early. Another edge guard here for Sabar. We know this. We literally just saw this before. Hits him with the turtle. Almost finds it with the down smash, too. King Jace with the shield at the right time. Excalibur responding with the spike off the platform. Forward tilt. Setting up another edge guard situation. 
Swap for Charizard to get another jump. Gets back to the ledge, but at what cost for throw? Setting up the edge guard situation yet again. Bop! Big head move! Ooh. Goodbye! <laughs> you started to think a little bit as soon as that Charizard was getting up from the edge that he was about to start something fancy, but I mean, it was excellent spacing from Airman First Class Nicholas Fanticane to just back up, wait for the Charizard to recover, and absolutely send him blasting off again, might I add. In, in a vacuum, that's actually a really hard situation for Charizard in particular because neutral get up or a roll, you're going to catch that up smash from, from Game & Watch. But if Charizard jumped there, that's a very easy up air into, you know, imagination in terms of how you follow up off of that for Game & Watch. So it makes me think we're going to need to see some adaptation from King Jace to, to get back off the ledge in those situations. Maybe do a jump neutral air dodge or something like that to kind of fake out the timing, potentially switch over to a different Pokemon. But uh, that that was just a, a dicey situation, no matter how you slice. If he was at, what, like 140 or something like that as Charizard, giant hitbox, big up smash there for Game & Watch. Yeah, that, that was going to be tough, no matter what. You got to think, I mean, that up smash too, it can hit both forward and back. So, like, no matter where you go there, it, it's a bad situation because as uh excalibur stated in his highlight video is mr game and watch will hold a lot of advantages when it does come around the stage and we saw right there was one distinct advantage on the recovery from that charizard it, it's just it's slow and it's a big hit but hitbox so so far for just game one i do think we got a lot of insight into how King Jace in particular approaches playing Pokemon Trainer in different instances. In my opinion, I don't mean the character myself, but I feel like there are two different schools of thought. You select your Pokemon either based on your own percentage, or you select your Pokemon based on your opponent's percentage. And what I mean by that is, he had just lost a stock, and I believe Game & Watch was kind of mid to high percentage, and he actively switched to Squirtle, which says to me like, He's considering his own percentage. Like, I'm low, that means I can go for these combos and stuff like yeah. that. But in this immediate matchup, we saw in the doubles exhibition, he killed Game & Watch with Charizard, like, across stage at 110 with a back air. And I personally think that using Ivysaur and Charizard more in this matchup is what's going to net him the most success just because those two Pokemon have such crazy kill power. Yeah, you could use Squirtle to get that low percentage to get them into the, the mids and beyond. But I think Squirtle is going to net him the least value in this matchup. Well, you have to think, I mean, every Pokemon trainer is going to be a different trainer when it comes to holding all three. You could be good at one of these Pokemon. You could be good at two or all three of them. And King Jace, you might just not feel comfortable in that mid to long range with the Ivysaur. I haven't seen him use it very often or opting to use that Squirtle or Charizard in those early rounds. And I think it's because of, like what you said, he's playing off of his own percentage, not his opponent's. And look at this, already struggling to play off the stage. A Excalibur is just maintaining control of center stage. The edge guarding is absolutely real here from Excalibur. On the Charizard now, 26%. And again, we do see the switch over here to Squirtle. Looking for the combo game. Can he actually achieve that, though? Down smash, not going to get punished there. Drops in, a couple of forward airs. Could do connect. King Jace right now is just effectively being boxed out by these hitboxes from Game & Watch. Zoning right now for Excalibur. It's what you expect for the way he was, you know, breaking down how he wants to fight against a Pokemon trainer. And he's executing it to a T right now. Stock advantage for Excalibur. And even percentage between the two, we get the swap to the Ivysaur, and let's see if those gangly, grassy arms can get it done. It might come down to Charizard coming into play here. We are going to see the switch over after the second stock gets lost. Back air again. No rage. 88 sub 100 post hit. I, I think that is going to have to be the key to success here for King Jace. Charizard can kill Game & Watch so early. And, I mean, you just look at the Squirtle pick, immediately goes to Squirtle, 74% from zero. It just hasn't been the pick, he hasn't been able to get done. It seems like Excalibur is very used to playing against a Squirtle. 
in what it seems. Ivy Sword's gonna pick up. Neutral air won't land. You see the recovery for Salver to take control of center stage. Go back to edge guarding. Go back to zoning away. This Pokemon trainer now looking to finish the job onto Charizard. 118% this is the end. <laughs> Big head mode rears its ugly head yet again. Caught you off the ledge. 2-0 advantage right now for Excalibur. Exact same finish from game number one, Haloran. It was just immediately as soon as you saw that Charizard get picked. Has to recover to the stage on high percentage. Gets up, and it's the up air from Mr. Game & Watch to finish the job. It, it's just the recipe to success right now for Excalibur. The, the more I look at this matchup, and, and again, considering the format that we're looking at here, you're going to see this matchup quite a bit. So it, it lends itself to some more deep analysis. And the more I see this matchup play out, the more I feel like Squirtle is just not the play. My, my main reasoning now is two of Game & Watch's biggest poke options are his forward air, the bomb that he drops, and his neutral air. And the idea of Squirtle being able to time and advance around those, like the run up and get a, a down throw, it just seems really hard. I, I just don't see Squirtle getting in to do their combos the way they're accustomed to in this immediate matchup. Cool. Let's see if home stage advantage can boost a little bit of momentum for King as he's already taking quite a lot of percentage early on in this matchup with Squirtle. Looking to stick to the Squirtle for now, though, up to 71. Has to be careful because very light character. Might be able to get one shot here from one of Excalibur's moves on Mr. Game & Watch, but... So it's going to be out. Almost at 100. Excalibur very, very low when it comes to percentage. Hasn't taken too much damage. He's doing a great job at making sure that Hymnistore doesn't have that medium to long range to work with like we normally will see. The forward throw can't find the combo. Edgeguard's going to be there. Neutral air keeps him off. This goes for the spike, but... I love the up through the ledge. It's one of the features that Pokemon Trainer has on this stage and in some other instances as well. I do think the Ivysaur is working out incredibly well, though. Back air right off the ledge. Sets up this edge guard scenario. We've seen King J struggle with this. And I feel like that down air might have been more of a blessing than anything else, but Excalibur is going to be there to punish the return. Stock number one is picked up. Want to see King giving this up right away. Punish the Mr. Game and Watch. And you can find it on Squirtle right here. Water Gun won't be charged, so I think people follow it up. Looking to finish it off on Ivysaur for that edge guarding, but Excalibur doing a great job at milking this. I milking the stock for now. Back to center stage. Heavy hits right now from the Ivasaur, but nothing to finish. Finally evens up the stock. One apiece. All right, so far this is the best King Jace's look in this matchup. He does get comboed up to the tune of 83.8. Going to switch over to the Squirtle yet again. 96. Uses the side B to break through the, the sausages. Still gets knocked away. Let's find one opening. Dash attack off the forward smash. Gets the advantage state yet again for Excalibur. Dash attack connects. And here's the down throw. Here he is. He gets in. No punish off the down air. The one thing that also Excalibur was saying that he feels very comfortable when it comes to playing off of his shielding. And when it comes down to that Brawly situation versus Squirtle, you can definitely see that Excalibur wanting to play like that in fact forcing the ivysaur once more on 131 percent can he get it done goes for the spike has to recover that's the sausages again the game and watch players saying they feel comfortable playing out of shield <laughs> i guess so no, I, I guess i would say so it's his words I, not I, mine I, I wholeheartedly believe him, but it's, it's just it's just funny man. Blair Blitz is going to connect the Hail Mary from downtown. The no mix-up mix-up. Surely he's not going to go for a Flare Blitz here. And yet. Flamethrower. Wow, that's a good percentage early. Onto Excalibur is still milking this stock up to 200%. Excalibur just hasn't been able to find that sweet spot just yet against this Charizard at high percent. And... The more King can do to prolong this stock, the better it is going to be for that last stock. Now we're going to see up throw. Oh. Combo, but seems like he's going to finish that off. Even at like 220, I thought there was a good chance that Charizard would survive the dash attack, not to be. 
King Jace, again, this is the best they've looked so far in this 1v1 series. Back air, landing hitbox connects. Forward air. Good jump over the bomb. Okay, I can get our side special going for us. Excalibur gets the throw. Follows up with the up air. King Jace manages to hit the ground relatively unscathed. We have an even match right now. We do. I, I want to see that switch to Ivysaur soon, though. As soon as Excalibur starts to get a little bit of a combo down against the Squirtle, it's going to be punishing. So I wonder how long King's going to stay here. Finally, we see the switch. Right to the Ivysaur already pays off. This could be it. King Jace might find his first game. This is spooky territory for Excalibur right now. The kill power for Charizard is insane. We saw him kill at 80. So what do you think he's going to do at 111? Oh. Switch over to Squirtle. Hangs on to the, to the Pokemon. Still. Directional air dodge punished by the dash attack. Now we see the switch over and the bomb. It's going to be enough. You see the fist pump there from Excalibur locks in the first series. Uh, that was a sweaty game number three from Excalibur. I, I'm i interested to hear Ex uh, King Jace's game plan at the end there. That swap over to Squirtle was bold to finish off that against Excalibur. I mean... He had a game plan, he went for it, and it just it didn't execute the way he was hoping to. And I don't think it's been executing through that whole best of five. We've seen it. I, I would have more preferred to see him stick to the Charizard at the end there. I, I have to agree. When like when you switch the Squirtle in that moment, there's a surprise element for sure. And it, it definitely seemed like that side special did catch uh Excalibur off guard. It's like, wow, he's switching to Squirtle here? Like, we're both over 100. This is game three. Yeah. But the the decision to stay on the Squirtle, the more the more he kept on the water Pokemon, I was like, ooh, I'm, I don't know. Because that's taken one of your huge advantages off the board. When King Jace was on Charizard, he survived up until 225 against Excalibur. Yeah. But if you trade that out for Squirtle, who has limited Fine. range against Game & Watch in particular. I just feel like you're, you're taking one of your big advantages and you're, and you're not utilizing it as well as you otherwise could have. And I think that was a contributing factor to why that ended up being a 3-0 instead of us talking about game number four right now. I, I think that's a contributing factor and why we saw the uh, the fist bump or the fist pound <laughs> at the end there from uh, from Excalibur 2. He, he clutched up at the end there versus that Squirtle and I think that is a crazy way to finish off our first series of the day. Now, if King Jace wants to see another best of five, he's got to win this next one coming up. But at the same time, you're looking at across the board, Excalibur now on championship point inside of the Smash Daft Gaming League Summer Finals. We're going to cut to a break. And when we come back, best of five, number two between these two players. You know, brother energy and, and that competition into this matchup as well. As, as early on, I, I'm looking at some very good executions from Squirtle, but a very good execution from Mr. Game & Watch. Back to the ledge, but at what cost for the throw? Setting up the edge guard situation yet again. Bop! Big head move! Oh. He's playing off of his own percentage, not his opponent's. And look at this, already struggling to play off the stage. Excalibur is just maintaining control of center stage. The edge guarding is absolutely real here. And you see the recovery for Excalibur to take control of center stage, go back to edge guarding, go back to zoning away this Pokemon trainer. Now looking to finish the job onto Charizard. 118% this will be it. Big head mode rears its ugly head yet again. The long range to work with like we normally will see. The forward throw can't find the combo. Edge guard's gonna be there. Neutral air keeps him off. This goes for the spike, but... I love the up B through the ledge. It's one of the features that Pokemon Trainer has, I guess. I would say so. It's his words, I, not I, mine. I, I wholeheartedly believe him, but it's, it's, just, it's just funny. Flair Blitz is going to connect the Hail Mary from downtown. Directional air dodge punished by the dash attack. Now we see the switch over and the bomb. It's going to be enough. You see the fist pump there from Excalibur locks in the first series.
of Malibu Cruising down the boulevard Kissing in the backseat of the car Making love under the stars How would you like to be satisfied with me? I've been counting moments of love I've been catching signs from Welcome back to the Daft Gaming League Summer Finals. My name is Lauren, joined here by Seymour. And so far, Seymour, Excalibur looks to be out of Arthurian legend. We have had six games, and he has not dropped a single one. Incredible stuff so far. Well, I, it was King Jace who took the show match. All right, yeah, I think yeah, that no, when, right. we saw, when we saw King Jace take the show match, it was a lot different. He was playing off of the Kirby, and I think the Kirby had a really big factor to play inside of that match against Excalibur because we were able to see, you know, Kirby really deny Mr. Game & Watch of what he's good for against the Pokemon trainer, and that's been so far what we've seen in the, the juggling aspect of it and, and you know, that the early damage that you get out of it. And when it comes down to the 1v1, I, I think that there's a lot lacking in the Pokemon trainer that you're seeing Excalibur exploit. I, I think we're seeing it, it comes down to what Pokemon is out on the table at, at the immediate moment and what put and what percentages both of our competitors are at. And, and I think we saw in general, the Squirtle really struggle to find their way in at the low percentages and prove to be something of a liability at, at mid and higher percentages. Squirtle generally gets most of their success off of finding grabs, uh, chasing down their opponents, and that's just really hard to do against Game & Watch. You have to worry about the fair, uh, the bomb, We you have to worry about his neutral air, and then if worse comes to worse, Game & Watch has one of the best up specials at a shield in the game, if not the best. It could easily be argued. So how often will Squirtle be able to rack up a ton of damage and really be an offensive threat against this character? Whereas on the other hand, Ivysaur, Charizard, they have a lot more range and a lot more kill power as a result. So I, I'm hoping going into the grand finals here, potentially the final best of five of the day, we, we see more of the Ivysaur and the Charizard take the, the center stage. Well, I, you know, one thing that I could definitely highlight from the first best of five that we saw between these two is King Jace did improve as the series went on. Now he just has to show how much he's going to take from that last third game where he almost sent it to a game mm -hmm. four. And he's got to expand on it a little bit more. And I, I think when it comes down to everything that you're looking for from King Jace, it kind of boils right off the point that you're making is if he's stuck to the Charizard or the Ivory Sword, we might be in a game four rather than the next best of five where he's now facing elimination in the grand finals. So you're looking at King Jace to take everything that you just said and Gonna bring it to light now in the second best of five when he's got elimination on the line. He's now gonna win two best of fives if he's gonna be your DAF Gaming League Smash Grand Final Champion. Early lead here of sorts for Excalibur. Things pretty much even back to Smashville. We we saw this this stage in particular be somewhat rough for King Jace at the end of a uh, game number one of the last series. Charizard just could not find a way back onto the stage. 
I always say it feels like you're fighting in a phone booth on Smashville with how small it is. So we're going to see a lot of scrapping between these two players right now. I think this is where, you know, Squirrel can shine is on a small board like this. But at the same time, it can be punished just like that. You're seeing Excalibur already. Oh. Sen King off the edge of the stage now. And that kill. Getting rid of the first stock. What is that? The charged up smash. Perfect timing. Reading the neutral get up. Excellent play here from Excalibur. Pressure continues to be applied. Squirtle already up to 42.5 off of the nice up air chain. Squirtle does get the grab. Goes for the back throw. Starting to charge up the water. We haven't really seen that be a factor so far in this matchup. Switch over to Ivysaur. So far, it's back to the advantage state here for Excalibur, who looks more than comfortable to just keep flipping that skillet. <laughs> <laughs> It is probably the best skill that I've ever seen from him. Dunge a little bit early. Well, I was king. Do recover to the center of the board, but is it a non flamethrower? Hunks up that percentage. Excalibur at a very distinct advantage go. right now, but King finds a stock. And you remember back to game number two in the first best of five is King on Charizard was able to prolong the stock to 220%. If he can do it here, he can potentially bring this back against Excalibur. I'm telling you, man, the Charizard back air is the way. That's how, how I see King Jace taking this series, getting back in, getting in their first game. Squirtle right now doing some combo work at low percentages. 20.9 racked up so far. The prolonged hitboxes of the down air connecting, getting some value here. Neutral air into the spot dodge. And that's the advantage state for Excalibur. Punishes the potential side special, the bomb waiting, the edge guarding again, the spacing there at the ledge with the skillet is crazy from Excalibur. Excellent combo there from the Ivysaur now. Maybe you pull this one back, edge guarding again. Oh no! Over. There it is, game number one. <laughs> Off stage and everything, Excalibur. Maybe playing this game off stage, but on screen, he's sitting front and center in the lead. What a read there from Excalibur. You do not get to swap Pokemon for free out there. I will come out and tax you, he says. Game number one of the grand final series kicked up in pretty decisive fashion. Again, Smashville, I'm, I'm neither a Game & Watch main or a Pokemon trainer main, but I feel like that is not a great stage for Pokemon trainer in the Game & Watch. You just don't really have avenues to escape, and with that lack of horizontal real estate, a lot of your space and neutral options go out the window up against some very large safe hitboxes. So when I talked to King Jace for a little bit of an interview to get to know him, and why he's picking the Pokemon Trainer. He said simply, he just wants to be the very best like no one ever was. And I gotta respect okay. that, you know, to an extent, but I uh, guess Excalibur right now in Mr. Game & Watch, it's not paying out one bit inside of this. I, I wonder if we're gonna see maybe a swap or if he's gonna stick to the Pokemon Trainer oh for the rest of this. And it, it seems like he, he wants to stick with the Pokemon Trainer, but you know, in future games, it might be into consideration to switch things up. A zero to death to start off game number two again. Squirtle just getting outranged in that small weight, proving to be such a liability in this matchup. And a huge spike. Oh! Already. Put a bit of panache on that spike. King Jason, do not count me out just yet. But again, that is an instance where I'm like, the Charizard's the play. So good, so early too. I mean, the early death on the Charizard already brings things back to even. In fact, it gives King Jace the advantage off of a zero to death. I mean, he completely brought this one back. Now to the Ivysaur. Look to see if he can recover back to the stage as we get to that edge guarding once more from Excalibur. And out of shield, won't be able to recover too, too much again off that. Actually, finds Excalibur now off stage for a moment. One thing we really haven't seen much out of King Jace is the Rage Elite Ivysaur and Ivysaur. And on paper, I get it, but the bucket could reflect that, and, and that's not great. But if it serves as a form of conditioning, if you can get Excalibur to think you're going to go for the Razor Leaf and he breaks out the bucket, that's a free hit. And he could use every possible advantage in neutral right now. 
neutral get up uh -oh. it's punished by quite the jab and that number continues uh -oh. to rise what dude that was like 30 plus damage off of that jab alone he got caught he got caught there inside of that jab now Charizard, I mean, can you keep this? Charizard has been the recipe to success for King, but at the same time, this early damage has punished him when he does make the swap finally, and it does it again. Charizard swap comes through, but it's already too little too late. I'm still back at that jab damage at the ledge. Good edge guarding attempt there from King Jace. Throw into neutral air, up air, 37% racked up. Air dodge punished by the skillet into the jab combo yet again. Excalibur has these low percentage combos on lock right now. An early swap up to the Charizard. Look at a punish Excalibur at 132%. All he needs is one solid hit. We're going to be saying playing it patient. Oh. He's not getting a single hit off inside this Charizard pick. Finally going to find it in the dash attack. There he goes, goes out and takes off. the stock. I'm liking the aggressive play off stage from King Jace again with the Charizard. At 115, we're keeping the Squirtle out. If he gets buried, that is it. And that is it. Excalibur is looking number like two. a well-oiled machine. He did not like getting it's comboed really like by that Kirby earlier. <laughs> no, no, he, he didn't. He said, bring things back, all right? You know what? You might take the show match, it's but I'll with, see you on the one-on-one -on -one yeah, stage. See me without the Kirby. <laughs> <laughs> and it's been flawless so far for Excalibur. That's 5-0 and oh since we swapped to the, in the finals. And if nothing in my mind changes that we're going to be seeing Excalibur walk out on top in this one game away from being your champion here in the DAP Gaming League and if King Jace wants to take this down you got to see him switch up to that Charizard and the Ivy Sword has to be flawless from here on out last opportunity here for King Jace Excalibur one game away from the 6-0 sweep here of the finals down air and it's the grab there's the combo game Squirtle is so known for 52 damage. You've done your job, Squirtle. Take a rest. Ivy Sword can take it from me. Well, there into the whip as well. This is a good early game from King Jace on the Ivy Sword. Actually keeping away from the damage off stage. Hops up into the neutral air. Keeps oh! Scalper down. Can he find the spike? Almost <laughs> taking the first stock. In fact, he's going to find it. Off stage is where King Jace thrives. Perfect play there on the Ivy Sword. Gets the down air. Takes the stock at a relatively early percentage. At 94, switches back to the Squirtle. Again, the philosophy is, if my opponent is low percentage, I'm going to go to Squirtle and get this combo. I'm not sure how great that's working out. It's the Flare Blitz. Back on stage. Gets around the up smash. There's the throw. Excalibur. Only 30% damage. Potentially stop the bleeding here and even things up. Flamethrower. Good forward air. Eggers out of Calibur for a moment. Back off stage. Like you said, oh! King, or King Jace thriving. The back air. Right onto Excalibur. And this is something we haven't seen yet at all in the grand finals. King Jace. Three stocks to Excalibur's one. Seymour. Excalibur was at like 68 when he took that forward smash. Again, the kill power is unreal for Charizard. Especially against a light character like Game & Watch. Down air is going to connect, but at 170 or so, he definitely got the value he needed out of stock number one. There's still a chance for Excalibur to turn this around. We've seen it, I mean, back in the show match, even in the 2v1. He has the finesse. He's got the ice, and when he's found in these situations, I, I'm never going to count him out, especially 5-0 and oh so far in the Grand Finals. He's got the confidence to make this one happen. Now looking to come back against this Ivysaur in hand. 95% to 64%. Up to 79 will be King for now. Back to the edge guarding and breathing. Trying to get back to the ledge. King Jace just wanted to live his life. Skillet and a down air have a thing or two to say about that. 106 on the final stock here for Excalibur. And again, Squirtle is the choice. And the more I see the water type Pokemon, the more I'm just like... 
Get out the Charizard, man. At the very least, get out Ivysaur. That's where you've been getting your stocks. Excalibur enjoys the opportunity to get the percentage there. Be as confident on the Ivysaur and the Charizard as he is on the Squirtle, but I, I haven't seen that reflect. It's been the complete opposite when it does boil down to it. Inside of stats, hits him with the neutral air. Trying to fight off stage once more will be the Ivysaur for King, but excellent recover from Excalibur to take center stage back. In fact, zones out King to the edge. Skill is going to be there. I thought he was going to hit from the Josh. Goes for the up smash, but goes into the forward throw. Alistair juggling to the Charizard's out for King. This is it. This is it. This is for the Grand Finals, and King stays alive. Throws him straight into Game 4. Here are my bands. When it comes down to it, Charizard comes through in the clutch, closes it out, and I'm telling you, man, Charizard is the way. I think I can see a little bit of sweat on King Jace's forehead <laughs> after that began. Because Excalibur, even when he's down three stocks to one, he still finds a way to make it close. If there's no sweat, then when would there be? Final stock facing elimination. King Jace. Perhaps that's the wake-up call. That's the blueprint. I keep harping on it, Seymour, but the more I don't see Squirtle, the more I see success for King Jace. I mean, that's what I was trying to highlight in that last game is maybe King Jace thinks he's more comfortable with the Squirtle, but I haven't seen it. I've seen the complete opposite. I'm right there alongside you, Halorn. Bring out the Charizard. Bring out the Ivysaur because Excalibur, he has struggled against both of those Pokemon. Now, the switch to this stage could be a pretty dicey prospect. I, I definitely see a world where Game & Watch gets full advantage out of these platforms to keep their up air chains going and keep their pressure going. You lose neutral once and suddenly you've eaten 80 damage. That is a constant and consistent theme here for Game & Watch on this stage. If you're not just killed outright, like we almost just saw there. Almost smashes them into existence. Them with the jab as well. Now King fighting off the edge. Nice. Boys the bomb actually, in fact, recovers back to center stage. So impressed with the way that King Jace is playing in this game number four. It's almost like a, a breath of fresh air. Oh, 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 oh. Ivy Sword's got some back throw potential too. He was at 91. Those are the types of things we need to see King Jace utilize more and more often to be able to bring this back. Beautiful edge guarding pressure King. stays on. King Jace was able to hang on for a while. Can't stay out there forever. Not at all. Not even the Charizard Swamp can get him back to the stage. And see for the Squirtle again. Back to even percentages. But I think Excalibur is going to be okay with that. Early swap to Ivysaur. I'm loving it. Loving it for sure. Razor Leaf's going to allow him to close the distance. But can't follow up on it at all. Excalibur manages to keep him at bay for a second. And... His neutral air is setting up for the juggle. Oh, Excalibur's starting to get into We are really starting to see the merits of this stage pick here for Excalibur. It can be difficult, to say the very least, to get out of these up air chains. In terms of stage, though, Ivysaur definitely has a lot going for them as well with their up air chains on this stage, but uh, it hasn't really come to pass. Flare Blitz interrupted. Armors through the forward tilt, keeps them alive. Dash attack comes through. Both players effectively at kill percentage based off the Pokemon selection right now. Interesting choice. Get this done. That connected. That was the stock for sure. He missed this back smash. Or even forward smash at this point. I mean, Charizard can get the stock, but he's just milking this to a T. Flare Blitz. Finally, he's going to lose that stock, and back to zero King goes. Last stock saloon. For King Jace, this is grand final point now for Excalibur. Side special connects. Tries to go for the edge guard. Oh, interesting spot there. King Jace fights their way back, gets past the throw, and gets a forward smash. Potentially a, a dropped opportunity there for Excalibur, but King Jace is more than happy to capitalize on that. Forward smash at the ledge again, switching over to the squirrel for these low percentage combos. We did see. I, I mean, I like that he was hold, holding on to the Charizard so early. It seemed a little indecisive. Swamps over to the Squirtle, and Excalibur actually catches him <laughs> in the swamp now. 
This, this is dangerous. He went for the judge. If that hit, that would have been an insane way to end the grand final. If a nine connected there, we would have had to unfortunately just delete the buy. It's just <laughs> immediate Scrub it. end of Scrub stream. Existence. Try to tune into the VOD. It just says right. redacted. Classified. Excalibur. Not able to connect up there. King Jay's fighting their way back to the ground into the waiting arms of Excalibur, who continues to edge guard there. Perfectly timed jump into the up air, and that's game. Hello, game number five. Oh, he holds on. He holds on, Haloran. And he takes a page right out of your Ivy Sword Charizard book that you've been writing, Haloran. I mean, we see it at the end of game number four. The ICR comes out and it gets the job done against Mr. Game and Watch and King Jace now potentially to reset the bracket, find the reverse sweep in the grand finals first best of five and have a chance at getting the title for himself. I'm, I'm telling you, Seymour, I will proclaim it from the rooftops. The more we don't see <laughs> Squirtle, the more success <laughs> I think. Now to King Jace's credit, his Squirtle at that last stock did really well in terms of get, racking up the damage and setting up the play for Ivysaur to take things out. But just on paper, across this entire series, you've got to think that Ivysaur and Charizard have been doing more for him than Squirtle. So the more you see Squirtle come out, the more it's like, you're, you're, you're asking for trouble. Here. It's like one of those, we, we've seen it in one of what, like five times though, not pay it or pay off. And it's the other four times that just doesn't uh -oh. pay off. He might be dead. The oh, oh he is super dead. Oh, what, a, what do you what do you do there? If you're a squirrel, you saw his eyes were bulging from his head. He was just panicking at that point. It's always a surprise where you're like, that might kill. And then, no, it absolutely kills. At 77%, yeah. the squirtle again, their lightweight, proving to net value for Excalibur. 57% already racked up, and Excalibur is playing. It feels like he's dialed up his speed quite a bit here going into game number five. I saw the early Charizard pick to see if he can find a, a trade right off the bat. We're going to see Ivysaur for the recover. See that slow float for Excalibur on the way down. Managing to just delay for King to get this chance, but Excalibur, he has been nothing but flawless in this game number five so far. Might have 51%, but looking to take the second star, Charizard, can he oh, find the no. way back? No, he cannot. One stock left for King. Excalibur is back on grand final point. With a two stock lead, I spoke too soon. A charge forward smash at the ledge. King Jace gets value off of that yet again. Two stocks to go. Switches over to Squirtle. Up B the other way, gets punished with the forward tilt, and oh no! If uh -oh. Excalibur got spiked there, that would have been spooky. That would have been the stock in an even game. Instead, King Jace is going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. And he's got to go right back to the step number one, sticking with the Squirtle for the early percent. A huge spike. Able to get... Uh oh, oh no way. off, but there it is. Still alive. If he was on Squirtle, we'd be setting up the interview right now. <laughs> Instead, King J still in it. 114. And to win it now, Charizard has to be the fight. You can't, I can't see him swapping off now. Outside of wanting some frame and vulnerability, you gotta think Charizard's gonna be the Pokemon for the rest of it, but the berry into the forward smash. Not heavy enough, Excalibur hangs on, makes the adjustments in the game number five, steps up the pace, and closes it out 3-2. And you can see he gets up from his chair as a grand final champion inside of your DAF Gaming League Smash Ultimate Summer Finals. You're looking at Excalibur, all smiles <laughs> inside of the hi, long Mom? arena. I'm pretty sure he said hi, Mom. Let's go. All smiles, all smiles, Lauren, for the end there. And I, I mean, you know, I, after what I saw in the first best of five, I, I was expecting Excalibur to be walking away on top. I, I will tip it, you know, give 
are given where it's due is that Excalibur, he was playing fantastic today on a, on Mr. Game & Watch. Oh, yeah, for sure. He, he definitely looked locked in and, and ready for the day. King Jace also had an incredible performance and definitely started making adjustments. I mean, to go from a pretty solid 3-0 victory in that first best of five series to forcing out game number five with some clutch plays and heroics at the end of games three and four, I definitely think that King Jace showed improvement. Um, it, again, it just comes down to what Pokemon is out at what time up against Excalibur's just consistent and steady offensive pressure. Uh, the, the edge guarding I was really impressed with, the, the skillet at the ledge, um, just finding those opportunities to rack up those low percentage combos with the up airs, especially on Yoshi's Island, man. Like that was just some top notch. If you wanted to learn game and watch play, that's what you look out for. I mean, we, you see it mostly when you're watching over Meister. When he pulls out Mr. Game & Watch, it's probably one of the best you're going to be watching. And from what I was seeing from Excalibur, he was doing an amazing job at just continually keeping King Jace off stage, Zoning him away from center stage, which is where you're definitely going to be seeing Ivysaur struggle a lot with. And as soon as Ivysaur is going to be struggling, you force out the Charizard. And Mr. Game & Watch just has so much more room to work off of that pick. And even against the Squirtle, I was seeing Excalibur just feel very comfortable when it came to act down to those low percentage battles. Yeah, I'm, I'm really excited. I believe we're going to get a chance to, to speak with Excalibur. I want I really want to pick his brain on a, a couple of, of things here. And I think we're going to bring him on. Excalibur, congratulations on being the Smash Ultimate Champion here for the DAF Gaming Finals. How are you feeling after a, a clutch victory there in Game 5? I'm feeling awesome. I mean, set one was really uh, 3-0 one-sided game uh, set two he really started to, to figure me out a little bit especially in those third and fourth games uh and then that fifth game i got my the stage i wanted and i just was able to control the center of the stage uh and here i am with you know victory i'm glad that you brought up the concept of stage because one of the questions i wanted to ask you it seemed like between smashville and then yoshi's island you're consistently getting stages that on paper seem to really favor game and watch do you feel uh, Smashville and Yoshi's Island in particular favor Game & Watch in that matchup? Uh, definitely. I think Yoshi's Island is Game & Watch's best stage or one of them. Uh, maybe not in that matchup because I die off the top really early to Ivysaur. Uh, but Smashville, uh, I didn't want to go to PS2. I was trying to keep him away from the Ivysaur down air up air kill. Uh, and Town was just a little too big for me uh, to deal with Ivysaur's Razor Leaf. So I was really happy with the stages that I got. Uh, and I, I think it definitely helped. Oh. It was great showing in that second best of five, you know, to start things off. But as soon as he was starting to figure out you out, as soon as you started to see King Jace pull it back, I mean, what were some things that you were taking into, you know, a fact in that last game when he started to figure you out? What were some changes you made yourself? Uh, definitely trying to SDI away from Squirtle's combos because he, uh, especially towards the end of that second set, was really starting to get a lot more damage with Squirtle. And that's Squirtle's whole job is just get the damage. Uh, get that he's got really good frame data to so just get these grabs and rack up the damage and on a character like game and watch you want to get out of those because you're so light so uh, he started getting a lot better at those and i just had to adapt and try to get away from it uh, as much as possible and i think that definitely helped out well you sure did adapt <laughs> man you're the champion now for the daft gaming league summer finals and you get to hold that right on your shoulder you know as something you accomplish here inside of Great Fine, Texas at the Belong Arena. And now that's going to bring me to the next set of questions is coming out to Texas, you know, playing Smash for AFG, you know, being able to do something like this. How does that feel? It, it's it's awesome. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm stationed out in Japan, so just flying out here, uh, getting the jersey, you know, being in this arena and stuff, it, it's it's an awesome feeling. It just feels so, like, professional, uh, and it was super exciting to be a part of it. Uh, and I'm even more excited that I uh, ended up winning it. <laughs> yeah, and, and, you know, being stationed out in Japan, pardon me, Lauren, I just got one more oh, question. Okay. Is Has, you know, AFG, you know, helped you connect? You know, has it has it helped you, you know, get it, get in touch with, you know, your base and, and everything around you? Absolutely. We have a great group of guys out in Misawa. Shout out to them. Uh, always practicing, always uh, working on matchups and stuff. It's a really tight-knit group. Uh, uh, one of the players from the last tournament, uh, Galactus, uh, the Incineroar main, was actually the one that uh, told me about this, so I ended up signing up. So big nice. thanks to him. Yeah, I 
big shout out to Galactus. Uh, actually, I uh, said hi to him a little bit earlier. So if you're watching what's going on, man, I got two questions for you. And then I want to ask you uh, what, what kind of shout outs you have. So we had a pretty interesting and unique format in, in the finals for today where you effectively had a best of three of best of fives. And I, I was really excited to see how it played out because it offers a really unique opportunity to make adaptations in a very specific matchup to learn how a specific player plays in a tournament setting. Do you find that this experience was different or did it feel kind of like business as usual in terms of competition? I, I think it was business as usual. I mean, the stages were all the same. Um, nice set of uh, variety with that. Uh, the best of five I really like is, uh, as you can see in that second set, we were really starting to figure each other's habits out a little bit more uh, and adapting to that. So that's a really important part of, uh, of a set. So it was really cool to see us both adapt. Uh, yeah, he definitely made it a lot closer to the second set. Definitely, definitely. So second question, you said that you've been playing Game & Watch since Brawl. What's your favorite iteration of Game & Watch? Uh, I, he's definitely the best he's ever been in this game. Uh, he's been a little bit weak. He was really bad in melee. He was okay in brawl. Uh, he's kind of bad in uh, Snap Four. If you count Project uh, Project Envy, I mean, he was really good in that for a while. Uh, but I I love Ultimate's version of him. The animations. Uh, he's got really good moves to deal with basically any character. The frame data is ridiculous. So I <laughs> I I love Game Watch. Okay. Okay. And last but certainly not least, anyone you want to give a shout out to? I'm pretty sure you said hi, mom, after the victory. I could have sworn Absolutely. I saw that. Hi, mom. Uh, shout out to my mom. Say hello to all my siblings back home, my grandma and grandpa. Uh, definitely 35th MXS, Engines Back Shop. How you guys doing? Uh, I'll be back soon. Um, and then uh, definitely the guys out in uh, Misawa, as well as uh, Black Hills Smash. Shout out to them, too. Airman First Class, it's been an absolute pleasure. Again, congratulations on your victory, man. Enjoy the moment. Thank you guys so much. I, we, we have had a, a, a really impressive display of, of Smash yeah. Ultimate. Um, I, any, anytime we get to see high-level play, especially here at DAF Gaming League, I'm, I'm always excited, and I'm really glad that Excalibur and King Jace both really had a, ch a chance and an opportunity to showcase what they're capable of. Man, we had some really great games today. I mean, when you're looking into what we are walking into today, Haloran, was it everything you were expecting in the Mr. Game & Watch and Pokemon Trainer matchup? I would say so. I, the, the, the wild card is always going to be in that matchup how the Pokemon Trainer approaches anything because you have three separate characters and, and so many different ways to approach different situations. So that was always the, the, the question mark for me, and I, I really do like particularly in that second set, the adaptation that we got to see. But again, at the end of it, Excalibur came through in the clutch, took game number five there in that second series, and, and has definitely earned that championship crown. And I'm looking forward to seeing him try to defend it in future seasons, man. Yeah, as, as am I. And it's been another exciting story here in Air Force Gaming. On stage here in Grapevine, Texas, for, at the Belong Arena, just another set of champions are crowned for another stage of the story in the history books of Air Force Gaming. I think that is going to round it out for us. Until next time, I've been Haloran. That is Seymour. Been our absolute pleasure. Hope to catch you at the next one. But until then, take it easy. Have a good day slash evening. It could have been their final stock. Instead, oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> you see how innocent that Kirby is standing there? They know they're wrong. <laughs> I'm getting deja vu. <laughs> we, we've been here before. <laughs> I've seen this before in some sort of way, and it ends the exact same way. <laughs> On the combo character of the bunch. And they charged up forward smash. You saw it coming up a mile out. And it lands, closes out this best of five. You knew it was coming. It's back to the ledge, but at what cost? Forward throw. Setting up the edge guard situation yet again. Bop, big head move. Okay, you see the recovery for Xalbert to take control of center stage, go back to edge guarding, go back to zoning away. This Pokemon trainer now looking to finish the job onto Charizard. 118% is going to be it. Big head mode rears its ugly head yet again. Ew. Directional air dodge punished by the dash attack. Now we see the switch over and the bomb. It's going to be enough. You see the fist pump there from Excalibur locks in the first series. Excellent. Combo there from the Ivysaur now. Maybe 
pull this one back. Edge guarding again. With oh, the no! There it is. Back to King Jace for a little bit of an interview to get to know him and why he's picking the Pokemon Trainer. He said simply, he just wants to be the very best like no one ever wants. It's a free hit, and he could use every possible advantage in neutral right now. Neutral, get up. Uh -oh. It's punished by quite the jab, and that number continues uh -oh. to rise. What? The Charizard at 115. We're keeping the Squirtle out. He gets buried. That is it. And that is it. Ooh. Actually keeping away from the damage off stage. Hops up into the neutral air. Keeps oh. the scalper down. Can't find the spike. <laughs> Almost takes the first talk. In fact, he's going to find this it. This one happened. Now looking to come back against this Ivysaur in hand. 95% to 64%. Up to 79 will be hit for now. Back to the edge guarding end row. Now looking for juggle into the Charizard's out for King. This is it. This is it. This is for the grand finals. And King stays alive. Throws him straight in the game four. Here are my bands. Making their way back to the ground into the waiting arms of Excalibur, who continues to edge guard the perfectly timed jump into the up air. And that's game. Hello, game number five. You can't, I can't see him swapping off now. Outside of wanting some frame and vulnerability, you gotta think Charizard's gonna be the Pokemon for the rest of it, but the berry into the forward smash! Not heavy enough, Excalibur hangs on, makes the adjustments in the game number five, steps up the pace, and closes it out 3-2.